Hello everyone. After discussing gene mutation in previous session, now we are going to discuss basic mechanisms of regulation of gene expression. I am Dr. Yogesh. I welcome you to this session in lecture series on genetics and molecular biology. So under the same competency BR 7.3, after discussing gene mutations, now we are switching on to basic mechanisms of uh, regulation of gene expression. So what are the mechanisms of gene expression in eukaryotes? This session is going to be just recapitulation of each and every aspect of replication, transcription and translation and various host translation modifications also uh, which are going to affect the regulation of gene expression. So these facts are known to you but under the regulation of gene expression we have to discuss the things which we have covered earlier so that we understand the regulation of gene expression in a better fashion. So coming to that, what are the basic facts which affect gene expression? The nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by a nuclear membrane, right? Now the transcription is taking place inside the nucleus and the translation is occurring in the cytoplasm. So the transport of mRNA across the nuclear membrane again will have some checkpoints, will have some effect on the regulation of gene expression by affecting the transfer we can you know withhold mrna inside the nucleus and translation will not occur so this is the fact which affects the gene expression then direct coupling of transcription and translation is not possible because there is a barrier of nuclear membrane mrna has to be synthesized fully and it should be complete later on the protein biosynthesis will start it is not coupled whereas in prokaryotes there is no nucleus and transcription and translation take place in the same cellular compartment and the translation is coupled to transcription i mean if there are 100 base pairs in primary transcript of mrna immediately after 20 to 30 base pairs are synthesized and mrna is not completely synthesized even then the translation can start in prokaryote so that is the meaning of coupled transcription and translation. It occurs in prokaryotes, it does not occur in eukaryotes. The genes are not divided into exons and introns in prokaryotes, but it is divided in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, there are several kinds of RNA polymerases, each containing 10 or more subunits. Now different polymerases transcribe different genes. So there is a specificity of RNA polymerase transcribing different genes. So there is a regulation of gene expression at the level of synthesis of enzyme required for a transcription. We have understood what are the enhancer, what are the silencers, right? There are enhancer sequences which are present near the sequence of gene which is under consideration of transcription and translation. Now these enhancer sequences which are far from the promoter are often needed for transcription initiation. But in case of prokaryote, we need only promoter sequence. There are no enhancers there. So here in eukaryotes, the enhancer sequences will be needed for promoter to get activated and initiation of the transcription. The transcription initiation requires promoters to be cleared of chromatin. So the chromatin, excess chromatin needs to be cleared before the transcription starts so that the RNA polymerase gets access to the promoter regions. The primary transcript undergo processing to produce mature RNAs, right? So after the formation or the synthesis of primary transcript, there is the post transcriptional modification processes to produce mature RNAs, like addition of 5 prime methyl cap, addition of poly A tail at 3 prime end. But in case of prokaryotes, on the contrary, one RNA polymerase consists of 5 subunits, not like 10 in case of eukaryotes. The DNA sequences needed for transcription initiation are located close to the promoter. But in case of eukaryotes, the enhancers are far from the promoter. We may say a distant or remote kind of uh, regulation of gene expression will be seen here. In prokaryotes, the promoters are not wound up in chromatin. It is available for transcription and synthesis of mRNA. But here in eukaryotes, until and unless the promoters are cleared of the chromatin, the transcription cannot start because RNA polymerase will not bind to promoter. The promoter regions are 
you know concealed or hidden under the chromatin so that whenever those are required will be available for synthesis of protein by synthesis of a particular mrna from that gene sequence in case of prokaryotes the primary transcripts are the actual mrnas they have a triphosphate start at 5 prime end and no tail at the 3 prime end but in case of eukaryotes the post transcriptional modifications are required for gene expression from transcription to translation coming to the translation level right the initiator rtrna carries methionine mrnas have only one start site and thus direct the synthesis of only one kind of polypeptide from one start site in one direction only one kind of polypeptide the small ribosomal subunit binds first to the methylated cap at the 5 prime end of the mature mrna and then scans the mrna to find the ribosome binding site coming to different regulatory mechanisms of gene expression in eukaryotes these are rna processing we have seen this like post transcriptional modification gene amplification gene rearrangement gene regulation by histones and non histone proteins then there is a mechanism of class switching then stability of mrna is also important so that it is available for translation process for a longer time then binding of regulatory proteins to dna for its stability then there is a role of enhancers and silencers and locus control regions and insulators in regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes coming to rna processing in addition to the transcription in eukaryotic cells uh, a variety of mechanisms to regulate gene expression are existing so basically the rna processing steps in eukaryote include 5 prime end modification that is capping of the 5 prime end of the primary transcript addition of poly a tail at the 3 prime end of transcript and excision of intron regions and splicing exons in the mature mrna molecule we have discussed these three rna processing steps in a session on post transcriptional modification then coming to gene amplification as the name suggests it is amplification so the expression of a gene is increased several fold this is commonly observed during the developmental stages of eukaryotic organism so when there is developmental stage or when there is growth definitely we require more protein so the transcription and the expression of the particular gene which is going to be coded in a particular protein which is going to be required for a particular step in the growth process so the expression of the gene will be amplified so that more and more quantity of the protein will be synthesized take an example of drosophila that is fruit fly during oogenesis what is required is during oogenesis an amplification of a few pre existing genes like chorion egg shell proteins s36 and 38 is seen because when there is oogenesis so the egg shell protein will be synthesized more so the gene responsible for synthesis of egg shell proteins will be expressed more or amplified take an example of methotrexate resistance in cancer we give methotrexate as an anti cancer treatment the malignant cells can develop drug resistance by increasing the number of genes for the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase so that they can survive despite methotrexate therapy is given so that will lead to methotrexate resistance coming to the next mechanism that is gene rearrangement so the gene rearrangement is done in the synthesis of light chain of immunoglobulins so take an example of that to, under to understand the gene rearrangement so each light chain of immunoglobulin is, is encoded by three distinct segments one is the variable vl segment the joining jl segment and the constant cl segment so variable vl joining jl and constant cl segment during the differentiation of a lymphoid b cell a vl a variable length segment is brought from a distant site on the same chromosome the gene responsible for vl segment it is located very far from regions of jl and cl so it needs to be brought from a distal site on the same chromosome to the position in the same chromosome and it should be close to the region of the genome so that complete light chain gets synthesized which will have vl segment jl segment and cl segments 
so this dna rearrangement allows the vl gl and cl segments to be transcribed as a single mrna precursor and later to produce a specific antibody light chain coming to the next mechanism that is gene regulation by histones and non histone proteins the histones of nucleosome can also regulate gene expression the molecular species of histone is too small in number to regulate 1.5 to around 3 million genes in in an eukaryotic genome and this occurs during the s phase of the cell cycle there are many post translational modifications of different histones and basically the post translational modification of histone include acetylation and deacetylation and acetylation and deacetylation actually help in expression of gene regulation by switching on and off the transcription process such modified histones can regulate gene expression the histone acetylation and deacetylation makes the gene more available or less available for transcription histone deacetylase enzyme collapses the dna around histone and reduces the gene transcription coming to class switching in this process one gene is switched off and a closely related gene takes up the function so the classical examples to understand class switching is immunoglobulin synthesis and hemoglobin synthesis coming to immunoglobulin synthesis we know that the primary immune response for any other gene we get in the form of initial rise of immunoglobulin m and which is followed by secondary immune response in the form of synthesis of immunoglobulin g so immunoglobulin m is a temporary immunoglobulin or antibody immunoglobulin g is the permanent antibody or immunoglobulin which is synthesized against a particular antigen initially immunoglobulin m gene will be switched on but later on it will be switched off and the gene for immunoglobulin g will start expressing will start expressing and synthesize igg against that particular antigen as a secondary immune response coming to hemoglobin synthesis as an example of class switching in intrauterine life the first embryonic hemoglobin is 2 zeta and 2 eta chains by the 6th month of intrauterine life the embryonic hemoglobin is going to be replaced by hbf that is alpha 2 gamma 2 after birth hbf is replaced by adult types of hba out of which 97% is hba alpha 2 beta 2 and 3% is the hba 2 that is that is alpha 2 delta 2 thus the gene expression is shifted from zeta eta to alpha gamma to alpha beta and alpha delta so this is how the class switching occurs and different proteins are synthesized by just switching on and switching off the genes which are closely associated on a given dna molecule then the role of stability of mrna in gene expression the stability of mrna molecule in the cytoplasm can clearly affect the level of gene expression that may be in a positive or negative direction and that can be influenced by hormones or other effectors affecting the synthesis and degradation of specific mrna if it is not degraded and available there proteins will be synthesized from that mrna right if it is degraded early the protein synthesis will occur for a very short time so it may affect in a positive or negative direction take an example Estradiol prolongs half life of vitellogen in mRNA from few hours to more than 200 hours leading to enhanced rate of transcription of this gene by 4 to 6 fold increase in vitellogen in mRNA if you remember that proper circularization of mRNA and its stability is also important for translation mechanism to occur then there is a role of specific regulatory proteins which bind to dna and affect the gene regulation the specificity is involved in the control of transcription which require the regulatory proteins which is bound with high affinity to the correct region of dna three unique motif account for many of these uh, specific protein dna interactions they are uh, helix turn helix zinc finger motif and leucine zipper motif then what is the role of enhancers and silencers in gene expression certain dna segments promote the synthesis of rna that those are called as enhancers 
so the enhancer here shown in green color which is a which is actually promoting the synthesis of rna then there are silencer denoted with red color which decreases the transcription process the activity of a gene at, at any moment reflects the interaction of these cis acting dna cell elements so enhancer silencer insulator lcr these are distal regulatory elements and these are cis acting dna elements which interact with respective transactive factors and in this way the gene expression is regulated what is the role of insulators in gene expression these are dna elements in association with one or more proteins preventing an enhancer from acting on a promoter on the other side of an insulator in another transcription domain so this insulator will prevent enhancer from acting on or promoter then coming to the role of locus control regions lcrs some regions of transcription domains are controlled by complex dna elements known as locus control regions these regions are associated with bound protein which control the expression of a cluster of genes the best defined lcr has been found to regulate the expression of the globin gene family over a large region of dna so there is a there is a definite role of enhancers in silencer insulators and locus control regions lcrs in regulation of gene expression please go through these references for deeper studies these are the references used for compilation of the entire lecture series thank you so much for watching the video hope you are subscribed if not kindly subscribe to the channel if you like the content please hit like button and share the video keep learning keep growing thank you once again